Q2VKPT released a while ago, which brought ray tracing to Quake 2. It was, and still is, a rather impressive tech demo, yet it had some problems. Due to the lack of global illumination, the darker areas were sometimes impossible to navigate without illuminating the environments with your weapons. There were no particle effects present when firing weapons, and there were issues with noise and ghosting. Nvidia stepped up the game with the help of Christoph Schied and Bethesda to implement various amazing features that modernize the look of Quake 2 and improve the playability and graphical fidelity of the game. Aside from the path tracing itself, Quake 2 RTX features bloom effects, HDR, normal maps, PBR, god rays and different environmental settings, amongst other things. Now you can also turn off the denoiser and the textures from the in-game menu, which makes everything easier for people that don't use an American keyboard. With those things said, let's get right into the performance of Quake 2 RTX. I own a RTX 2060 graphics card, which is the cheapest card of the RTX lineup. In conjunction to that, I have 24GB of RAM and an Intel i5 processor, which is admittedly a bottleneck in my system right now. I am able to play Quake 2 with ray tracing at 60 FPS with the global illumination setting set to low and the resolution scale configured at 90%. With ray tracing enabled, the game features a hazy look with slightly blurred textures and edges, so setting the resolution scale down a bit doesn't negatively impact the experience for me. I play at an FOV of 120 and it seems like it doesn't affect the performance at all and if it does, only minimally. When playing the game with VSync enabled, I always played at a smooth 60 FPS with an occasional drop to 59 FPS. Even when recording the game with OBS or Shadowplay and screen sharing the game over Discord, the performance also always stayed the same. The performance only drastically decreases when moving the sun around in the sky to change the lighting in the level, but that is an expected outcome. The performance is a bit worse in Quake 2 RTX compared to Q2VKPT though, but that has plenty of good reasons. The biggest reason being PBR and textures. In Q2VKPT it was showcased that removing the textures entirely results in a drastic performance increase, despite endless reflections going on throughout the world. With the inclusion of higher resolution textures, normal maps and PBR materials, there is a small compromise of performance present here. Yet for owners of an RTX card, it only seems to be a minimal compromise. Quake 2 RTX looks phenomenal. Depending on the environment settings, you can play the game with drastically different looks. The original environment colors the environments in a red tone, which is more appropriate tonally and setting-wise, while the Earth environment colors the environments with a beautiful cyan tone. And the Strogos environment, which features a browner light color, feels like a mix of both environments. You can configure the position of the sun to either be relative to the player's time, to be set in a specific time of day, or you you can manually adjust the position of the sun with the help of a gamepad in real time. With that I was able to test the capabilities of the global illumination and god rays Quake 2 RTX offers. For players that tested QTV KPT before, you will know that the reflections were rather unrealistic. The water looked like liquid mercury because of its perfect mirror-like reflections. Now you can see the ground surface from above the water and under the water surface, you can look up into the sky. There are still some issues, mainly regarding the reflections, but that seems to be an inevitability. Going back to looking down above the water surface, the water distorts the geometry below the surface. This is an effect that I think I have never seen before in a game, and while it could be a bit more realistic, it is an amazing effort already. Also, light sources that you can throw into the water like flares are colored by the water as you can see in this example. The flare above the water surface colors the environment with more warm colors, while the flare under the water colors the environment in a green tone. Glass seems to not only reflect most of the light, but it also can handle refraction and is more transparent than in Q2VKPT. Now you can see the character's entire body in every reflection too, instead of just a floating arm holding a gun. There are still some issues though. Ghosting seems to be a bit more severe than in Q2VKPT, and it does appear often especially when moving fast. Textures also seem to distort and move in the distance due to the denoiser and speaking of noise, it does appear quite a bit in environments with a lot of contrast, or again, when fast movement is present. Those faults aside, this is a mind-blowing piece of technology. The last portion of this video is a visual demo of in-game footage showcasing some settings and normal gameplay throughout the levels of Quake 2. Thank you for watching this video and I hope that you enjoyed it.